Well, hey the team, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more of The Pale Beyond. So we're basically just getting into week two. Basic stuff so far. So who's knocking on my door? Come in. Door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, this seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. Uh, I've no time for celebrities. It's an honor. I know little of the man. Um, I mean, I don't want to be curmudgeon -y. It's an honor, sure. It's an honor, really. A wealth of invaluable experience in such hostile environments. I wonder he's not been swept up to some other post. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Are you always this early to rise? Well, I mean, it's a ship. Everyone should be up early, but anyway. Do you need something of me? No, no, I'm simply busy. Oh, of course. The role of first mate must surely take up a great deal of your time. Apologies for not stopping by sooner, Shaw. I've been busy myself. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Now, it's not often they work with a film star, is it? That's right, you're something of a celebrity, aren't you? Ah, uh, don't be aloof. Is that a brag? Well, it's not often that they work with a film star, is it? Certainly. It's completely understandable on their part. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. More than one fellow on this crew said that his, my work inspired him to explore the world. Well, that's kind of cool. Quite the honour, is it not? Uh, I'm certain you receive the praise often. This crew doesn't seem the film-going type. Is there a point to any of this grandstanding? Wow, you can be so bitter, hey. So what, the dude's a celebrity. The way his life plays out is probably very different. Um, at least he's taking it in his stride. I think, I think he could be quite easily very miserable if you were constantly being shook down for being a celebrity. Um, I'm certain you receive that praise often. Not as often as you would think. <laughs> I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping that you'd join me up on deck. Um, of course, but why? Oh, we finally entered the pack. I thought that you'd want to see it for yourself. Oh, it can wait? Nonsense. We'll be moving through ice for a while, I'm not interested. No, I'll be right behind you, Kurt. We could be fast friends for all we know. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy your morning. It's a good day, sure. <laughs> he seems like a pretty cheery, affable dude, you know? Oh, okay, so I've got some stuff on the walls and that. And then we can check our diary entries. That's right, week two, we, we stopped at Orca Island, picked up the dogs, picked up Kurt and his scout crew, right? Okay. Let's go, let's cause some trouble. Oh, what's this here? At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath of the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Morning, and a good morning to you. He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty. Call me that on account of, well, it should be obvious. <laughs> He's missing an eyeball. He chuckles. Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised Hunt picked from outside for his first mate. I'm surprised as well. He seems into the type. Uh, that's probably the right answer, yeah. He is. You must be something special for Hunt to look outside of the ranks. Colonial. Hunt doesn't have much fondness for the military, but it at least means you've got the work ethic. Yes, true. Mornings like these are about the only place I, uh, only peace that I get from the younger lot. You should take these moments when you can. Lefty returns his attention to their home. As you get older, I suppose you learn to value the quiet moments, eh? Let's hope that we're just as diligent when we're old and grey. <laughs> Myself before you, of course. Harold Turner. Lefty has been added to the manifest. Alright, well, let's go hang out with Kurt. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You uh, both feel the temperance breaking the flows below you. Gripping the railing, he draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow. Ooh, 
There is a moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. Well, you weren't wrong. I assume you'd seen everything. It's just ice. Oh my god. The game really wants to option you to be a, just a shit, dour, horrible person. <laughs> this guy's just nice and happy. You weren't wrong. It's something alright. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. Did you want to just show me the ice? Now though I need a navigator, not a poet. Nonsense! Okay. All caused by us. By the laws of nature, this place wants us dead. And yet, here we are. Traversing in harmony. How fantastic is that? Um, how far are we from land? We're about a week's sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is, on this course, it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. We need to change course, avoid the pack. Ooh. Have you informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. Thinks I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. Hmm. I'll hear no more of us. No, 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 no. This is his field of expertise. We have enough supplies if it comes to that. It's not my decision. Yes, but you do have the captain's ear. Have you ever experienced the long night winter? It's not pleasant, to say the least. If it comes out, we'll adapt. There's a chain of command. I can't say that I have. Can't say that I have. We're only as good as the unhappiest man, Robin. <laughs> That's first mate short. No, 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 no. This guy's essentially... Like, it's all a bit informal. I'll do what I can. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. Yeah, maybe I will. I might twist the captain's arm a little. Kurt nods and turns back to look across the ice. Right, so he thinks that the course that we're on is sort of setting us up poorly going into the pack. Hmm. So we will uh, see if we can get through to the captain. Ah, sure. Ready for another day of work? Um... Did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. I, uh, he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time, but these days Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. Well, that sounds more jealous than anything. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed the line pulling up outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. Um, I mean, we'll just start with this Hammond bloke, right? A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Or not with intention? <laughs> not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Sure, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? Well, I mean, he's just like any engineer. He just tells it to you straight. We've hit the ice, and you haven't assigned any extra men down on the boiler. You have your engineering team. And we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower ma maintaining this. Sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks that they're busy with. I know I've already assigned a smurf on as a matter. The captain turns to you. Or onto a matter. How many do you think is fair? One? Three? More. Open the crew manifest to choose your sailors to assign. So this is how you assign sailors in this game. Smurf is already up to something, is he? Okay. And there's some dudes I haven't discovered. So he wants four up to one. You know what? Let's give him the full lot. There you go. We'll put father and son in there. Is that four? I think so, yeah. You can take Tashi, two Johns, Runt, and Runt's Dar. You're giving me Ward? Ward with one bloody arm? Young Runt could use someone to teach him on the job. Who better than his father? Don't get me started on handing over the bloody stowaway. <laughs> Would you rather... I like that there's text customised to the characters I just allocated to him. That's pretty cool. Would you rather none? The engineer holds his tongue. Fine. 
But you can tell me how right I was when we're buried under the ice. He leaves. A good spirit, that one. Beneath the oil and the temper. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to burrow himself into the boiler room. Ah, very good. I like it. All right, Kasha, the ship's photographer. Um, a thought occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew manifest, and, well, it might be too late for this now, but that we've already entered the ice. Out with it. Well, I thought it would be good to have the individual photos of the full crew. For your report? Well, not only my report, it would be good reference for the manifest. Put faces to the names. Much of this crew has served me for years, some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, sure? It seems a good idea. If nothing else, it would make it for a good souvenir. Sure, a waste of time. We should be bracing for the ice. No, whatever. Gotta worry about morale. It's a bit late, but it's now or never. No, it's a good idea. It would make for a good souvenir. Sentimental of this expedition, are you? Some proper photographs will have some historical, or add some historical weight to it. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Sure. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. She departs satisfied. So let's talk to Sailor Corvid. Hunt, you asked for a report on how the stowaway was doing. Aye, I wanted to know if the young boy had been settling in well. He has indeed. It means another mouth to feed, but the boy works hard and doesn't ask much. He has his da to guide him as well. I'm sure the boy's father is ecstatic. Worried sick, but happy, aye. Well, what do you know, Shaw? Perhaps you were right to keep the boy aboard. She leaves. Finish your request. Well, there you go. Things are coming up Millhouse at the moment. Good to have all that settled then. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate path through the ice, then he is free to search for it. Sure, meet with him when you have time. Changing course or not, We'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, then you'll be done for the day. Oh, well, there you go. He's had a bit of a change of heart after ruminating on it. So that's kind of cool. Um, what's going on here? Seasick. You spot a youthful looking man leaning over the side of the ship. His head slumped as he looks into the icy pool below. It appears he's been visited by a spot of seasickness. Pat him on the back. Are you okay? Leave him to his illness. I mean, I guess you could pat him on the back. You make your way to the man and reach out your arm to pat the sickly fellow on the back. As soon as your hand reaches him, he jolts upright in shock. A bespectacled young man, shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered across his face. Oh, sorry. Are you alright? I've seen you around. Who are you? Compose yourself. Are you alright? Um, yeah. Well, not really. Ah, oh, I'm very sorry. The man turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Okay, Arthur Nutley added to the manifest. So let's have a chat with old Kurt. Send me up there, I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of, of course. <laughs> if you find one of mine, they'll get us a reading rightly. Okay. Cool. So what's this? While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting uh, crew. Ah, no problems. She looks to you. And you are... Uh, I'm the first mate, you should address me as- no. Officer Shaw, yourself? Flick! I'm one of Kurt's crew. See how she's in a matching red that Kurt's in? Don't worry about my safety, I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Oh, cool. Right, so. We'll put Flick in the uh, crow's nest. There she is. They ascend to the nest and take a reading with the sextant. All clear from up top. So now we've got a bit of a 
world map. Look at this mouse wheel. It's weird. So what's this? Last known location of the Viscount, your destination. So we're going through the pack here. The hard pack. The last port you made where you picked up Kurt and the scouting team from. Right. 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 Oh, what's going on over here? You overhear two of the newly arrived scouting crew talking. Yorick the Third. Ah, Quilsey. Have you any trouble setting in? Quilsey says, not too bad. I can't wait for a chance to sleep though. A proper navigat navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issues settling in? Oh, not at all. The crew are a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. Oh, do you, do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Ah, perhaps. <laughs> okay. So there's more scouts. Um, let's go deeper down. What's going on here? You spot a suspicious looking sailor emerge from the pantry. The hoodest sailor spots you, keeping their hands firmly in their pockets. Now, not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. Pleck, but call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. I hadn't considered that. You best have a good... No, I'll take you at your word. Hmm, expected you to interrogate me more. No worries, I was just setting up a practical joke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, best of luck with that. Let's not interfere. Thank you. It's not at your expense, if that's your concern. Have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With their mysterious traps set, gnomes scurries off to the upper decks to return to work. Hmm. Okay. Hello? He spots you and ceases his playing. Accordion player, need something. You're grimly, aren't you? Yeah. The man grunts. I. Grimly Stoke. Right, his brother's with uh, Junior, right? The chef -o. I'm the ship's carpenter. Um, nice according to my... Oh, careful. Don't get too... He might get territorial. Grimly takes a step back as you approach. You can see from there, no touching. <laughs> if you're the carpenter, shouldn't be working. No. Your brother sent me to speak with you. Bugger it. We'll do that. Junior? Oh, you're sure. Junior mentioned you. Um, in a positive or negative light. Ask him yourself. Wanted us to meet, did he? We're met now. Won't keep you from your work. Don't keep me from my break. That's fair enough, to be honest. I don't, I, I don't really want to encroach. So what's in here? Oh, yeah. The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flour drops on your head, scattering all over your officer's uniform. Well, I guess there's his trap. The hells was that, gnomes? You wipe the floor off you before con the flour off you before continuing. You lift a crate of tints from the shelves. Okay, cool. Oh, oh. Ah, one step ahead of me. If you add those tins to the hoosh, then we should be able uh, should be good for dinner. Best make use of the kitchen while we can. Feed the hoosh pot. So, essentially, you can add food. You can see it adds either 20 food or 3 furnished. So we do that. Tops the food up. Cool. And then we can serve dinner for the, for the day. The crew have had their meal. Ah, shall we toast to the ice? Says Darling. Oh, that's Kurt, right. I was like, I know him as Kurt. Aye. The days grow longer, but dinner, dinner is fixed. I will see us through, it will see us through the long days and the darkest nights. It's not a bad toast. The crew return to their posts, their hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. What's going on over here? You notice two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An inebriated sailor on wobbling legs leans on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. <laughs> you need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine. Me mates can carry me, eh, cavity? Now they could also drop you. 
Have two Johns carry you next time. Oh. Are you asleep? Shit. <laughs> Alright, so we're filling out the manifest. There we go, I think we found all the sailors. Two engineers that we haven't seen yet. Some more scientists. This, whoever that is. Another specialist. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, what's in here? You knock on the door, no response. Oh, yeah? You overhear two engineers chatting above deck. Well, that works out, doesn't it? Or rather, you overhear one engineer speaking with another. <laughs> I like their, uh, their little goggles. Grips. Don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening. Hmm? You ever see Mr. Hammond eat? Hmm? I haven't. Maybe he doesn't eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. Yeah, he probably sleeps. Hey, Dick, it's figurative. Right. <laughs> sure. Captain's turned in for the evening. Um. Oh, yeah? Talk to Cordell. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. Oh, yeah? Try the soup? Let's go, baby. You nearly burn your mouth on the hot broth. Surprisingly tasty. It's surprisingly palatable. You feel yourself warming up. You seem to enjoy it. I'm afraid there is only so much. If you want more, it will be among the dog's leftovers. Penguins, some blubber, fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate. Oh, cool. Was there something that you needed? Um, just inspecting the animals. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their pores as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. All right. Strong creatures. Very. They handle stress differently, adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. Oh. Who's that beside you? This is Stanberry. <laughs> You've been on the ice for a long time. You love these animals. Yeah, you love these animals. They need me. And you'll need them. Pat Stanbury? Oh, let's see how that goes. You ruffle its head. It tries to lick the broth from your fingers. <laughs> cool. Look at them all. All the boys. The boyettes, I guess. Whatever. Oh, cool. Alright, well. Finish for the night. So the turns will move a bit faster as we get further into it. But, um... See, now... So we don't have enough fuel for that, so we'll have to go at ration. I feel like we'll half ration for the moment. The game hasn't given me enough to work with, and we can take a little bit of a decorum hit, I suppose. Yeah. Another week passes. The temperance has finally entered the thick ice leads, and the days grow even brighter. Or ever brighter. Three weeks on the temperance. Okay. Let's have a bit of a look around. I wonder if we can go down here and have a squeeze. Uh, there's not really anything going on. The boys are all still asleep. Oh, what's this? Oh, right, our position's been updated. We're well into the... The hard ice. Okay, well, I guess we start the day again. Captain Hunt appears to be absent. His chair is unoccupied. Wait for the captain. Oh, we'll get started without him. The whole room shudders. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good at all, man. No, no. No, 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 no. The ice. What in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice. We could be trapped for a while. Strong pressures, as if it di if we didn't have enough bother. Well, no need mucking around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sure he felt it too. Sure, check the boiler room. I'm sure the moleman has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. 
Alright, well I guess we'll go check the boiler. Hello? Officer Shaw, what happened? Ships come to a stop. I almost flung my camera into a wall. We didn't hit anything, did we? Um, have you seen Hunt? Not since this morning. He was going to speak with Grimley about the lifeboats last I heard. Huh, okay. Alright, down we go all the way. We haven't been here yet. Grimly. Ship stuck then. If you're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. How? We didn't cross paths. Don't ask me. I'm going to go check with my brother. Huh. Alright, well, let's go see what's going on with the boiler. Hey, right, if I'd made errors, any, I'd tell you. It's secured, don't you worry. They notice you. Jeez, am I interrupting? Not any more than he's interrupting my work. <laughs> I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. And I told you that if it was, you'd already know. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man with just a pair of engineers as assistants. Just looking at the number of valves, this seems far too much for you to handle. Maybe you bloody, your bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will. Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on this ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative that we break free from the ice as quick as possible. Hammond eyes you, a grimace on his face. First mate's here, but what's the one that got us into this bloody mess? Or where is he? He's a difficult one to find. Indeed he is. I have a suspicion as to where he might be now. We're on a ship, an unmoving one at that. The man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in his cabin. When you find the man, give him an earful on my behalf. Can't do it myself. Too busy keeping us alive. Templeton gives a nod. I believe you and I both owe our good captain a visit, sure. But you should call the crew for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Not before we fed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker, sure? Or are you afraid to dirty your hands like Mr. Templeton over here? <laughs> so it's the same sort of mechanic as the hoosh pot. Hoosh pot, whatever you want to call it. Grab a sack of coal briquettes. And then feed the furnace. Ask the engineer to raise the heat, cures the crew of freezing. I don't think that's a problem. Alright. You emerge mid-deck to find the crew readying themselves for dinner despite the ice. Some seem nervous, others as if nothing has changed at all. Yeah. Is there anything going on in the hot lo upper decks? No. I guess we just feed them and get on with it, right? The crew have their meal, the dinner is shared. Crew return to their posts, the hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that there's still bright light outside. Ooh, what's going on here? You didn't see him either. He didn't pass by, but his- he didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? I don't know. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Hello? No sign of Hunt, I take it? Mr. Templeton passed by, but he wasn't exactly willing to take questions. Huh. Oh, the boys are out on the ice. Keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, sure. I, I like Kurt's energy. He's always very high tempo. I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt's hold himself up inside. Maybe if he had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> what? Hmm. I was informed that he was here. Where could he have hidden himself? He has to be in here. Check under his desk. I highly doubt he's cowering beneath the table, sure. Ah! He's in the bathtub. The captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You're a surprisingly difficult man to get a hold of, Hunt. Seeing that this is your ship, oh, I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? This is not a good sign. I don't suppose you care to join. 
I need a quick sip myself. <laughs> um, Hunt shakes his hip flask as he holds it out, whiskey sloshing and spilling from the top. And what of you, Shaw? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar. Right? No, I'm fine, thanks. You'll be more than fine with a drink in you. Ah, well, your loss. You intend to offer drinks at a time like this? Yeah, this is... This is not good. <laughs> this ship, your ship, is trapped in the ice. It's my ship now, is it? Hmm. And what do you expect me to do? Get the shovels out? <sighs> you could at least... I've carried your load until... It. What do you mean this isn't your ship? You could have heeded Kurt's warning. Ha, Kurt. Are you still hanging on his word? You would have had some luck relying on that old lout. Oh my god. He's a man chasing a spotlight, nothing more. Oh no. This captain's a sloperator. There is no safe passage here. This was always going to happen. Mr. Hunt, Captain. If you are not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night. Shaw will stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty. No captain who would do that is a fit captain. Wouldn't you agree? Well. Not you, sure. Isn't that right? What do you think this makes... What do you think makes for a good leader? <laughs> Sobriety for a start. Yes. Huh. <laughs> he sips at his drink. But I'm serious, sure. Fuck, I am too. To you, what makes a good leader? We don't have time for this. In a word then, what makes a good leader? Understanding, control, and willpower. No, I'd say probably understanding. Control, not so much. That follows on. Like, willpower, sure. I'd go understanding. Understanding, explain. The ability to adapt to your crew. To understand the individual needs that make up the whole. That's, yeah. To understand what needs to be done. To know your next course of action. Yeah. To understand your limitations, to know what you're capable of. No, 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 I'd say the crew. And if those needs conflict, it's all well and good to think you can bend and twist and please everyone. Do you think you could balance that? Scorn a man one day, then appease him the next. Do you think that balances out? Which is he more likely to remember? Speaking in platitudes will do you no good. A good leader is something more than a single rule that you were told to follow. When you see one, you just know. It, it, he makes a valid point as well, but you can both be correct. You've wasted enough time pining philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Sure. Look at where we are. Do you honestly think we're going to survive this? Um, I don't know. I have no doubt we will. We're, who gives a shit what I really think? That this is the exterior that you present, especially in leadership. You never, you always, always say that there's hope. And so what? When everyone's dead, does it matter that you lied? Right? Hope, hope is an important thing. Well, I suppose someone has to carry faith with them. The captain laughs. Oh, the captain's cracking, man. Sure, nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. Wait, hang on. No, no. Wouldn't want to upset your employer. Our benefactor. Hmm, this mysterious benefactor. We all want to be paid after this, don't we? Enough. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to do it. You you shouldn't be. None of us should be here. Old Kurt paid handsomely to join. You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me. A doctor. Oh, and then there's me. Uh, what are we actually searching for? Hunt chuckles, gesticulating mockingly with his hands. Ghosts! Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. See, Templeton sounds like he's in the pocket of the benefactor. Let him speak, Templeton. I wish to know more. Yeah, 100%. It's alright, Robin. Go now, sure. I'll be alright here. The captain appears to have fallen asleep. Ugh. <laughs> oh, man. Captain Hunt needs his sleep. It would appear the pressures of command have greatly affected him. You should find some rest yourself. The crew have their commands. Clear your head, and we will continue on the morn. All right. Well, I guess so. Rough start, then. 
Oh, do you reckon that'll save it? You awake to a room awash with green. I'm going to roll the dice on that and hope that it has, because that, that seems to be where it would save. Quick edit, because when I went this, it says you will lose your progress for the week, and I'm pretty sure we're on week three, so let's just put a bow on this. You awake to a room awash with green. There is a loud banging on your door and a familiar voice speaks from behind the wood. Sure, are you in there? It's Hammond. Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? Ah, uh, never mind the green. The boiler's in serious trouble. Pumps need ma need manned and we need to stop the whole system overheating. And I don't need to tell you that if the furnace goes, that we go. Oh, geez, okay. Lead the way then, we don't have a moment to spare. Right, let's move. We need to find the captain. Now. <laughs> of course, the captain's probably not around. What's up? Kasha rushes up, holding her camera tight as the ship rumbles. What's happening? Are we going under? Not if I can help it. It's safe to go up top, right? The Aurora, it's a shot I can't miss. Kasha steps back before snapping a photograph of the ensuing chaos. I mean, Roll the dice, see how you go. Oh my goodness. The lights of the Aurora flicker over the pale ice. Oh, where's the captain? He'll be bloody missing as always. Speak the Templeton. Nothing. Visibly perturbed, he takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty. Why would you expect him in the tub? Look, it's not important. This doesn't make sense. The man seemed barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? Hammond turns to you. All right, sure. Captain's missing. You're in charge. Yeah, okay. I'll try. Um, I'll try my best. We can't give up on Hunt that easily. Right. Good to hear. Don't get a big head about it. Yeah. See, I think that was a trap. No matter what I answered. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking at this moment. They're no doubt scared and confused. It's your duty to keep them calm to maintain order. Hammond glares at Templeton. It's Shaw's job to get down to the boiler room now. We've already wasted enough time looking for the bastard hunt. If you storm down to that room, all you'll be doing is inciting panic. Oh my God, Templeton. Th there is a time for frigging HR people shit. And then there's a time for, you know, saving the, end the boiler from blowing up. We need to calm the fears of the crew, maintain an air of focus. Lie to them as the ship goes down? Not at all. Instead, to assure them we know how to remedy this matter. You do know how to remedy this matter, don't you, Mr. Hammond? I And we'll need to be quick. I don't have time to worry about some stupid sailor's feelings. I'm 100% on Team Hammond. We've got a bloody ship to save. Well, it's as you said. Officer Shaw is in charge. The decision is yours. Hammond is right. We can't waste any more time. The boiler won't wait for us. Fine. I'll keep the crew at bay then. Good. Come on, don't worry about him. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go down to the boiler. As more of the crew notice you and Hammond descending below, the whispers begin. We're losing decorum, so what? Soon the crew pick up the pace, walking directionless with hurried footsteps. Kurt approaches. Boiler trouble, I take it. I'll lend a hand. Not when you're walking with a cane, you're not. I have enough strength to go and tell the crew to hit the lower decks, as many as possible. Let's go, Shaw. Time to save this blasted ship. Let's go, Hammond. You descend the ladder. Ahead, you can see the brothers trying to open the door to the hole. Trying to get in? Same. Door's stuck. Pull harder, you bastards. We need to get in there. It's the only thing that matters. Right now, the metal door unsticks. Grimly looks to you before darting off into the dark. Where's that bloody idiot running off to? To sound the alarm. Bloody hells, let's get moving. You enter the boiler. Uh, as, as you enter, Hammond's engineering team are hard at work. The larger of the two engineers loses grip of their valve. The steam begins to shoot out, causing Hammond to dash forward. Watch it! Hammond tackles the engineer to the ground, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time. What's the word, Chief? Keep those valves pumping. We need to avoid a water hammer, or we won't be making it off this ship. Sure, the rest of the crew aren't here. Grab a valve and start turning. Oh, I'll, I'll grab this one. You grab a valve and begin turning, trying all you can to keep the water at bay. Pump! 
You feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve, keeping the pressure at bay. Oh man, this is pretty intense. Losing fuel. Oh no. The furnace rumbles and sputters, hemorrhaging fuel. You keep turning, doing the best that you can to keep the pressure at bay. We could be at this for hours. Shit, where's the rest of the crew? Oh, here they come piling in. All the boys brought help. Very good. The furnace rumbles and splutters. Get me coal and turn those valves. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Tashi, get on the valve, mate. Grab that valve. This bloke as well. Two Johns. Jump on that, mate. With enough hands working on the boiler, you begin to fight back the potential water hammer. Someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place. Oh, we're not putting young bloke on it. This dude will do. Tolson. Tucker approaches the furnace. The room shakes. Water hammer! A jet of steam paints Higgs. Oh no, wounded. It subsides as they writhe in agony. When I get wounded, scurvy or frostbite, they will become invalid and unable to work. You keep up the work, shifting the valves until the boiler has fully calmed. The ship is saved, you won't be sinking today. As the crew gives assistance to the wounded Higgs, you feel your muscles tense. You fall back, collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay back, all you can hear are panicked voices. Where the hell is Captain Hunt? He's gone. Right. Well, I've got no fuel or food. Like, what, what do I do here? I mean, oh, it won't actually let you do it if you can't afford it. Ah, okay, well, that's cool. Jesus, no fuel? Oh, man. Well, that's all we can really do. The temperance is saved from sinking. The aurora passes, leaving only the bright light and white. Jeez. Week four. 